Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, whatever. That's about it. Because we're teaming up for the first time in both of our seminars. TDM and advanced healing. Or natural healing, sorry. Where are we? I don't know. <laughs> because functional physiology is the thing that we have to address. How this body really works. In TDM, I try and show you step by step how the computer in your body works. How to access it and how to reprogram it. And when you've done all of the basics, then you're eligible for shortcuts. Sometimes you can get away with doing shortcuts right off the bat. That's where I start. But if it doesn't, you need to have the knowledge of the basics to go back and do it the hard way. But the one thing that we've learned, or one of the things, is that people have to be involved in their problem. Now, straight chiropractic has given instant relief for many, many things over many years. Oh, it would have gone away anyway. No, the doctor didn't fix it. That pill finally took effect after 30 years. <laughs> no, I, I give you a story. My wife's grandmother, she passed away a couple years ago at 98 plus, less two. No, she was 99. She had two weeks to go to me, 100. Oh, wow. And she had lupus for 30 years. Medication, all the good stuff. And those who treated lupus know that they are on a medication that does not work. And they have exacerbations and remissions. And when they're in an exacerbation, they have to go to the doctor three, four times a day to get the medication modified. Take three drops, four drops, five pills, whatever. Changing every time you see the doctor. Well, she did this for 30 years. Now, of course, I'm a chiropractor, and they were pro-medical, and I'm good for a headache or a neck ache, but for sick people, no, forget it. <laughs> but she was in this exacerbation and had her headache. So she came by the office. Well, Diane sidled up beside me to say, Fix her headache. Don't tell her. Just fix it. But fix her lupus, too. Okay. So I did. And she had to go back to the doctor to get her medication changed. And they took her blood, went into the lab, and a few minutes later, the doctor and the lab tech come flying out of the lab. My God, you had spontaneous remission. You no longer have lupus. And took her off the medication completely. One adjustment of the liver. Didn't do anything else. Didn't run the full program. Just one move on the liver. Those who were in class yesterday, 258. Knocked it out. No big deal. So 10 years later, she's at the MR, or her HMO and complaining that she only has 5% kidney function and they want to play games again. And she says, well, what for that lupus I had for so long, I wouldn't be in the shape I'm in. And the poor intern, Mrs. Cobb, you do not have lupus, therefore you could never have had lupus. Why did I take that medication for 30 years? Oh, they must have misdiagnosed it. <laughs> Spontaneous remission and misdiagnosis. That's 99% of their activity. I have fun. I love rattling cages. I like incurables. I don't believe they exist. One of my favorite toys is ankylosing spondylitis. It may take an hour of treatment, but totally gone. Not even a spur in 90 days. We only have seven validated cases. 
MRI, CAT scan, lab work, pre and post. The insurance company backed off after seven. So that's enough. You've got to prove, forget it, no more. We'll pay for the care, but no more testing. But we've got hundreds that we've done from bed over, straight, within five days, playing golf within three fun and games. There are no incurables. Yes, there is. But when you're too scared to try to attempt. Yeah, that's true. That is an incurable. But we'll give it a shot anyway. Won't we, Ed? <laughs> and don't be scared at what you see. Because the body will tell you exactly what's going on. And you let words bother you. you know, I used to explain to my patients that, because I had a writer when I did my initial workup, if I wrote it two days down the line, it was cold and couldn't read it. So I had a writer to write down all my notes. And I'm going to be naming off various functions of the body, but don't let me scare you with words. Because we can find a 2 to 5% loss where medically it's 40 to 60% before they will accept it. So don't let words scare you. So as an example, what does hepatitis mean to you? <coughs> One word, hepatitis. <gasps> Gonna die. No. Hepatitis is two words. Hepa is liver, itis is inflammation. So it means your liver is inflamed. And that covers the whole gamut from a two beer hangover to death. And they throw that word out just indiscriminately and hope you jump up and down and say, what do you want to cut? I'm ready for anything you want to give me. Panic. Don't let words scare you. There's nothing in the body that can't be helped. Even if it's only that much, it's a help. I'm not happy with that. I want more. We do get greedy. Like I was saying yesterday, we expect and demand miracles. A patient walked in sick, I expect them to walk out well. I don't care if they're in a wheelchair when they walked in. But we will concede when it's beyond the body's ability to do that instantaneous. But if we don't fight to the last degree to get it, do you think you're ever going to come close to getting it? So we expect it, and we get it 90% of the time. Did it walk out well. You've all failed. Did it hurt? <laughs> Mentally? Emotionally? Yeah. So if you fail again, what do you do? You back up 10 and punch. Start over. Try it again. So it makes it fun. Well, you've got. I don't care. Let's see what the body says. And the body will tell you exactly. We have so many man made conditions out there today that is ridiculous. How many have seen the uh, tic tac toe in the sky? Those are called chemtrails. No, they're not contrails from jet planes. They're chemtrails that are being sprayed on you. The contrail is formed at 32,000 feet. Natural occurrence from jet planes. And the trail disappears with the plane still in sight. The chemtrails stay there spread out and form an overcast. And that is the biggest difference between the two, as far as visual. And they're 19,000 feet, not 32. Uh, they've been changing the elevation around here. Well, well they brought it down and bring it out in uh, semi-trucks now, yes. too. Yeah. Well, it's, you can type chemtrails on the internet and get all kinds of information on it. But what they are spraying is everything from Mulberg to anthrax to any biological oh, agent, they want to get rid of their warehouse. And there is no explanation as to why they're doing it. Or who. 
It is happening globally on every country. I was in Germany and it was worse than Vegas. And I'm going, ah, Christ, at least I'd be over here. Now, yeah, that didn't help. It's the same well, stuff. And they change it frequently. I did a adjusting seminar in Amsterdam a few years ago. And we had chemtrails here. <coughs> now, we have an apartment in Bruges, Belgium. So I took the train from Bruges up to Amsterdam to do the seminar. And as I stepped, I had to change trains in Antwerp. As I stepped off my train to get on the one across the platform, I started to cough. And I looked up. Oh, my God. There were just hundreds of crisscross chemtrails. And I ran across, got on the other plane, got off under it, and went on up. That was the first time I'd ever seen a chemtrail in Europe. Five days later, they announced NATO was shut down with a flu epidemic. So when you see the chemtrails in mass, three to five days, you're going to have all kinds of flus going on. The hospitals are going to be inundated with young and old. Us in the middle age, we're not bothered. But the older people and the younger are involved. And if they go into pneumonia, it's 80 to 90 percent fatal. But they also throw one other little bug in there. It's a good one. And it's called Zeta. This is the suicide virus. It causes suicide in the elderly. It was found in all of the kids who shot up their schools. They wanted to commit suicide, but they didn't want to go alone. So they took their friends with them. It's spelled Z-E-T-A. There's another one called Z-Dub with a D, and that's totally different. Yep. But we have a lot of things out there that we're dealing with. Oh, and by the way, we can fix that in about three seconds. Oh my God. Neutralize it. Would that be something you check every time you see someone? Of course. Okay. You know, there's certain things that we automatically check. Huh? There's only two things that really go wrong with the body. But you've got to have these two things before anything else can manifest. First of all, you're dehydrated because you don't drink water. And it's 50 pounds per quart, or reverse it, one quart for every 50 pounds of your body weight, daily. Plus two. Sometimes. Plus two in my work, plus one in his. <laughs> well, yeah. And then you get uh, Kevin Millay. When you call his office, he's doing strictly uh, my, uh, fiber, uh, he's doing my, uh, fibromyalgia. Yeah, that's it. With all the new That's diagnosis stuff. He specializes. But these people, uh, I'm going to back up because I didn't finish my statement. Uh -huh. You give them an instantaneous cure of a problem they've had for a month, a year, 10 years. They made one move, it was gone. It didn't happen. It couldn't be fixed that easy. So I believe that you have to run them through the basics. Get them involved. They've got to work to drink their water. They've got to work to control their sugar problem. Then they can accept the miracles. But if you just dump a push-button miracle on them, and they're not used to having push-button miracles, they can't accept it. So Kevin, when they call up his office, the girl on the phone says, okay, when you have drank six quarts of water daily for two weeks, return the call and we'll give you an appointment. Doesn't matter if they're five years old or 105, it's six quarts of water a day. No, I chewed him out on that. Well, so did I, but that didn't matter. He still did it. <laughs> no, that's Kevin. He does about half of what we say. Then when he follows the other half, he goes, oh, well, 
Yeah, yeah. Sure. Is he keeping up? Yeah. He's one of my instructors. He is really brilliant. But he short he tries the shortcut. Yeah. Well he goes shortcutting shortcuts. <laughs> yeah. He does half of it, gets half the results, and then whines, and then I tell him, <laughs> Dad tells him, do the other bloody half. It worked. So he did it on a handful of oh. I didn't have to do that no more. Yeah, we've been telling you that for ten years. <laughs> yeah, Josh. Okay. Uh, just a quick question. Stand up and face it up so I can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, basically, what I was wondering is, um, do you find that it, it's helpful also to do the basics in terms of putting that information sort of <coughs> into the computer in that um, when you shortcut, it might not pick up that point or that yeah. part. So it seems to be a little more effective, perhaps, or anything like that. You found that to be true? In my belief system, in my way of working, yes. Okay. I have to do the basics. And in my uh, way, no. But okay. just say, <laughs> I'll finish this. So basically, I have used his files, which is module one, module two, module three. They're on test files. Got it. Okay. I did a cancer patient in Minnesota, a patient of one of my doctors back there, uh -huh. and he hadn't had the basics. But he was dire straits and slated for complete amputation of life, I think. And it was brought to me. And I, luckily, in my test kit that I travel with, I carry all of the technique files just in case. Right. And I didn't have time to do the basics on that one, so I did the technique. technique right. And then treated him for cancer. And <laughs> it did work. It worked. I only had to do that a couple, or got to do that a couple, three times. Because when I asked the body, can I cheat? No. <laughs> do it the hard way. But that's me. Now he can get away with getting about 90% of the time. It'll say, yeah, you can go ahead. But I don't get away with that. Got it. Yeah. But there's also a factor that because. With him teaching his work, he has to teach the basics. He has to stay in that realm. Mm -hmm. And my work shortcuts all that that I know the work. Right. Although I do so much of it, I've got to go look it up. But it's on the menu. I can access it. And then, all right, now how the beep do I do that? Yeah, right. Yeah. But I'm working <coughs> on the shortcuts of more complicated systems. So for him to step up to where I'm playing, and then have to step all the way back to the TBM, mm -hmm. or sideways, or mm -hmm. we work together. There is no one. He works on individual parts. I work on individual systems Got that's it. made up of groups. Mm -hmm. So he has trouble stepping into my realm and then step back into his and feel good about it. I understand. Okay, thank you. That was helpful. Thank you. Yeah. We used to teach together the basics. Right. And it made me step back. Yeah, and it uh, <laughs> they got to be a real pain in the neck because he couldn't step back far enough to be at basics and I couldn't step up far enough to get into his realm. So he's okay, you stay at your leg and we'll, now we're trying to put the philosophies together because you've got to have it all. That's a good idea. Because you've got to be able to put the, the computer back together step by step when it's needed. And you need both hands. The boss of the whole operation is just at the back door. Diane, say hi. Hi. I'm not the boss. If I was the boss, they would do what I say, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I wonder I'm my own I boss. I didn't get over to the. That's why I came down. Yeah. Uh, I, was gonna, I tried to call you, and my phone screwed up. Because I need air. <laughs> Oh. I know. Okay. I'll um, go take care of how badly you need air. Whatever a bell can bring it down. Okay. I'll go back up. Thank you. She says she's not the boss. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> how many are married? Yeah, Is she the boss? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I may argue a lot, but <laughs> now she doesn't try and tell me what the techniques are going to be, except fix it. Yeah. But I, I have you tried? Yeah. No. <laughs> then try. 
You can do it. How about when you work on her? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's why I like having other people work on her. I'm too close. Me too. I just channel them out as fast as possible. Okay. You want to get back down to what we were talking about? Yeah, go ahead. If you remember where we were. Well, I know we were going to start with rib torque. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and explanations, but we got sidetracked on results and didn't go into concepts. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yes. You said the main two problems with the body were dehydration and, and sugar. sugar. Too much, too little, or both. <clears throat> if your sugar is under control and you drink your water, your body has a 90, 95% chance of forestalling you coming down with anything else. But if you're dehydrated and your sugar's going sky high, you're liable for anything to come down the pipe. Um, you don't need that. Once you get your sugar under control, then it's a matter of questioning your brain, yourself, your computer, asking the question up here in the forehead, what can I get away with at this moment? Not yesterday, not tomorrow, right now. What kind of a day have I had? Well, I had five insurance checks come in this morning, and we want to go out and celebrate. Go do it. You're on a high. You can do any booze, ice cream, pie, cake, anything you want. You're on a, a roll. But if you had three or four checks bounce, and you're overdrawn at the bank, and the bank's calling you, what are you going to do about all these checks? And the buddy of yours calls up and says, oh, what a bad day. I need a drink. I'll join you, but I'm not having a drink. I can't afford that. You can swallow negative emotion, or you can eat bad food. You can't do both. If you do both, you're going down the tubes, and then you're liable for anything. So you've got to ask, what can I get away with? Short story, I love banana splits. Good. Years ago, the best banana split was at Chinatown in LA. And I would get a mouth hunger. This is what you get when you have a desire. That would sure taste good. And I'd tell Diane that I wanted my banana split. Let's come on. So we go out to our classic convertible, and we'd put the top down, or leave it down, and we'd head down from Tahunga, which is up on the hill. And we'd get on to the 210, to the 2, to the 5, wow. to the 110. You really traveled for a banana split. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> banana splits are worth it. It was an hour drive. It was <laughs> 10 months. And we'd come around the curve around Dodger Stadium on the Pasadena Freeway. And just as we got to the entrance to Dodger Stadium, some guy comes flying across the freeway in some piece of junk and cuts in front of me. Now the exit is on the left-hand lane, not on the right. <laughs> the freeway goes to the right, it drops right into Chinatown. Now I am proficient in profanity. I have been around long enough and I help write the language. <laughs> so I'm good at it. But Diane doesn't like that language, and especially when I scream it at the top of my lungs. So I have to bite my tongue when I want to yell at this clown for almost cutting me off. So I had to swallow my anger for the guy cutting in front of me. Here I am, 400 yards from my goal, and I just ate a meal of anger. I can't have my banana split. I can't go another mile down the road and have Filippi's French Snip, where they invented it in 1906. And I normally would stop there and have three of them and then come back for my banana split. And I got to go down and make a Yui and go back up, which makes me even more angry. <laughs> Drove all this way for nothing. Believe it or not, they went on for nine years. I never got my banana split. We flew to New York when Jimmy was 
at the brand new Marriott on 42nd Street, and right at the front door was an escalator that went down. And right at the bottom of the escalator was a Spencer ice cream store. And we got on the escalator, we rode it down, nobody cut us off. I made a quick right turn, and we got a table, and I had my banana split. Whatever year that was, I don't know. That was the last one I've had. I had Randy and his wife with me sometime two years ago, and we stopped at Chinatown in LA. You know, there's only two stores left in that whole Chinatown. And it wasn't the ice cream store. And the ice cream shop. store wasn't there. You didn't get much off business. Okay. That's right. <laughs> so they're gone. So I have no idea where to get a good demand. Like, <laughs> but I had the one at uh, Spencer's in New York. So that's a fun game thing. Is it, is, you, it, is it sugar that you mainly can't eat? No. It's you're not eating enough protein. For those who don't know, sugar problems are protein, not sugar. <clears throat> and it's not pancreas or adrenal, it's liver. And the medics published this in 1973. And then disavowed it. You can't find it in any of their writings, any of their archives. But John Hopkins published it in 1973. I mean, what I'm is when you have negative like the swallowing motion, is it sugar you mean, mean you can't eat? It threw your liver into a toxic condition, and your sugar is out of control. Oh, okay. Like I said, you eat the wrong foods, or you can swallow negative emotions. That will throw your sugar out, screw up your liver. Yes. Okay? Okay, now, you can go ahead. Where? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, in TBM, they've got the two. They've got the sugar and the water. Natural healing, we've also got red meat. What, we're, what I found is that red meat, rare, has a catalytic factor that fires up the nervous system. And without it, it's like driving your car on battery only, no alternator. And we're finding that vegetarians have a life expectancy of around 30 years. And then they die. I know one that did it at that age. Huh? I know one that did it at that age or younger. Yeah. And that's if they start out healthy. If they start out sick, it goes shorter. But that's about the life battery or the life of the battery of the nervous system is around 30 years, is what we're finding. And we started checking meat levels and how much people need it. Now, Dad, for years, has been talking about needed nine ounces every seven days to keep the methionine levels to balance your sugar metabolism. Uh, I'm finding there's a couple of the Asian groups, Taiwan, I think, is one country that I've actually found that could be vegetarian. The rest of the world, no. But we've got techniques that can test and find out if they can or cannot be vegetarian. Oh, they have a seaweed consumption. That's, there's some something about the seaweed around that area. <laughs> Only for that's, that genetic group. That's supposed in to be that that why that's true. In Japan, they eat a lot of kelp, and they're all thyroid iodine deficient. But I did the medical convention in '74 in Tokyo. That was what we thought. It just blew the medics out of the water because they never test for thyroid. Because they eat seaweed every day. <coughs> but they were all deficient. So. so just because they eat a lot of something doesn't mean that they're using it. <coughs> That's why I believe we have to check the computer. Is the function working? Yeah, well, stress can short out the thyroid easy enough. Uh, actually, no. No. <coughs> thyroid, adrenals, and hormones are all hypersensitive to toxicity. And they are the three most common diagnosed problems. They're the symptom. The actual cause is fix the liver. The liver, because of stress, slows down, allows the toxicity to build up in the body, 
And every cell in the body is now surrounded with a certain level of toxicity. Those that are more susceptible, weakest link, show up as symptomatology. Fix the liver from lab test to lab test in seconds. Full blown thyroid, no hormones, adrenals just wiped out completely. One move, and they're dead even, exactly where they're supposed to be in less than a breath. I have a question. How, how do you rationalize then the idea that they, I, I have read uh, one of the largest studies on vegetarians was the uh, Seventh-day Adventists. They're mm -hmm. vegetarian. And they live on average seven years longer than the general population that eats meat. I'm just curious. Uh, how many of them follow it? Like any know. religion. There's only one religion I know that follows it pretty much to a T. They're pretty strong about it. I'm not that Seventh-day Adventist, but I, 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 I assume that they're... Uh, they're pretty, uh, pretty and who wrote? Who though. paid for the study? The church. Probably. Well, so okay. I don't look, you had General Mills that did research on the harmful effects of red meat and the benefit of grain. <laughs> now, Harvard, you know, respected university of research, top of the notch, and they <coughs> proved that <coughs> red meat will kill you and grain will save your life. It's the healthiest food. Well, that got the meat industry all upset. So they hired Harvard to do their research, and it proved that meat is what you need, and grain will kill you. Who paid for the research? When you see who paid for it, now you can judge the accuracy. Does it fit what you want to believe? Or deal with the research you had to engineer that test to come up with the phony results to get his funding. Well, that would be saying, though, that you, if you were a vegetarian, you should do, be a vegetarian before you do your research about whether meat works or not. Because I have otherwise treated a, a vegetarians that are flawed. No, I mean, in other words, it's your, your bias, and there's a built-in bias because no. you're a carnivore. I'm, I'm just saying that you, if you no. use that same logic, you know, that's... Not really. It doesn't, well... You because know, I don't already, build my research <laughs> on making money on the meat industry. Okay. I build my reputation on a patient dying in front of me right. and finding out what's different and what got them over it and surviving back to a normal, healthy, environmental life. Okay. Probably there's an influence. You're correct. There's influence depending on who's doing the research. And, and, you know, as far as that, what I'm saying is that perhaps when you're talking about that, because of your desire to keep, keep your status quo, you're going to attract those people into your practice that truly need a meat diet, yeah. okay, that we're vegetarians. So I'm just saying that that's, that's a possibility as well. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's what we it's think not oftentimes only that makes a difference as but to what the also, outcome is. My doctors that follow what I do uh -huh. all over the world, including London, England, where they have a large India population, <clears throat> yes. that now has to eat red meat. They are a vegetarian-based culture. Yeah. Hindus, One problem is that in their country, their flour was full of bugs. And they cooked their breads and everything with it. They did not throw it out. And they got their nutritional value in the flour over a millennium of genetic modification. Now they move to London. We are of proper, clean culture. We don't eat that dirty flour. We now throw it out and buy fresh. And they're not getting those nutrients, and they're having to eat meat and wondering why they're falling flat on their face. No energy, tumors, lethargic can't think, and every other disease out there. This is built, this is where the difference between medical research and TBM and natural healing. Our belief systems are fine, that's our own belief. When it comes to getting a patient well, and just because it worked for one is irrelevant. How many others did it work for? Are we seeing a pattern? We hand it out to our doctors. All right, here's a new toy. Let me know what you get. And they're getting the same results without our biased opinion or attraction. Okay. That's the difference between our work.
It's result-based research, not money-grabbing. How much protein a day, then, Doc? So how much protein a day should you have? You have a lot. Well, I'm finding that over the last, what, five years now, I guess, yeah. I've been playing with that, that the normal body needs between, a healthy body, three to five pounds of red meat, rare, sliced, every seven days. Not the nine ounces that TBM says. But I deal with the nervous system and how it functions, not the individual components. Yeah? I, there was a study once that said that too much protein will blow out your kidneys. Uh-huh. Um, you know, yeah. I've always disagreed with that. But it does. It's a very profitable statement. But every time I statement. recommend protein, you know, I get that thrown back in my face. Yeah, it's profitable. They like the business. It's the same thing they're saying about drinking too much water. It's hilarious. Water is what keeps everything moving. If you've got a stream going down your house, and that's where you throw all your junk, it goes right on down past the neighbors, right? Now, start turning the valve down on the water so it slows down. That stuff's not going down to the neighbors much, is it? It's staying next to your house and smelling up, right? Yeah, well that smell, creates disease, creates problems, creates high blood pressure, bad skin, kidney failure. And the last thing the medical industry wants you to do is drink water and wash all that crap out. And clean the stream back up so that you're healthy. They didn't get to sell you a drug, they didn't get to sell you a surgery. And that's all the corporation cares about. Not the guy in the corner. But the corporation, they're in it to make money. They got pencil pushers at the top, and they're looking if we give them this drug, how long before we get surgery? Uh, I've been a nutritionist for 40 years and chiropractor for 30, and I think the most powerful healing food on the planet is rare or raw meat. Every single study they've ever done, when they say about meat, they're talking about a broad-based animal protein. Nobody ever studied beef with vegetables. Well, they always did Midwesterners eating bacon burgers, french fries, artificial malts. Every single time they go to the Midwest and they do that junk. I treat a lot of NFL players. They come in wiped out. Okay? Most of them are black, some of them are white. But the blacks, they have a tendency to like chicken and shrimp. That's their protein and pork. They don't eat beef. I take them off of all of that and put them on two pounds of beef a day, minimum. In six good. months, their entire protein matrix of their body is built, and within a year, I don't care what happens to them, they can't be injured. Yeah. Their ligaments, they eat one meal of shrimp and wiped out, they twist an ankle, throw off the knees. I eat... Um, I'd fix that problem. <laughs> Gotta be a they overdo it, they go crazy. Of course. But, uh, I eat a pound of meat a day, and the key is just not eating it with a bunch of garbage. Caesar salad, and I can work anybody into the ground. I work two shifts into the ground. And I got a freezer full of two and a half to four pound steaks, and that's yeah. single serving. Yeah. And I'll eat three or four of those a week, easy. Yeah. I practice what so I preach. I, so. I believe beef is the key. So are you saying the, the Caesar salad is garbage, or? Good. Well, no, keep no. it simple. Or Eat your meat as I mean, your primary what, thing and don't go into a lot of greasy other What you know, I have found, substances. and I've got a couple researchers actually confirming it and working on it as well, is that in the red meat, when it's cooked rare, right. that means the center cells are not ruptured. No. The catalytic factor that fires off the nervous system has a half-life of seconds. By the time it comes out of the grinder, it's gone. There's nothing left. That's why it has to be rare. And what we found was that red meat for the majority of humans, there's always that isolated few, that 10% wants to break your rules. Those are fun. But for the 90%, that is going to fire off the nervous system. The nutrients in it, you have more 
minerals, vitamins, hormones, essential fatty acids in a one pound steak than you do in a bushel of vegetables. Because it's already in an ionic form, there is no digesting. It passes right on through and you use 99% of it. Where your vegetables, you're getting right around, what is it, 25% absorption? If that, maybe three to eight. Yeah, and vitamins are worse than that. So you're getting far more. The only other thing we have seen that is required is fresh fruit. You need, still need the fresh fruit. We believe it's vitamin C, but we're still figuring that one out. Yeah. Um, what about the arachidonic acid in red meats? Drink your water. That's it, huh? Yeah. Okay. When I said I eat somewhere Sugar between control. 12 to 15 pounds a week. Easy. Sometimes more than that. The arachidonic acid comes from not controlling the sugar. The insulin, high insulin, produces a much more arachidonic acid. So it's not from eating the meat. Yeah, Gil's one of the doctors that we've been playing heavy with, trying to figure out all the biochemistry mumbo jumbo. Yeah. I got the idea, he even explained it in biochemistry terms. <laughs> <laughs> Handy to have around, translate. Yeah. Is that the same with all the preservatives and things over there? Do you just say more water? I don't care. Uh, yeah, more water. Uh, I'm no purist by any means. Uh, the red meat, my water, yeah, I do those pretty religiously. Uh, but I'm human. I slip once in a while. Last couple months, I haven't drank all my water. I'm noticing. But I've been drinking it for years, so I've got a good reserve. But now I'm getting back on it. Uh, but I still, I eat out at restaurants, I eat, I don't go organic. And organic food is great for exes. Because you get them on that organic for any length of time, they'll never go out and eat again. They're going to stay home because they're going to spend three days in bed on that organic food junk. As soon as they go to a restaurant here, or one of the buffets, they're hyper allergic to everything that's not organic. So now they're going to go spend three days in bed and you got another break. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, is there a reason that you have a preferential to the to the muscle part of the beef rather than the organ systems like the liver and such? I mean, I know. Yeah, I hate carnivores liver. Are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reason. That's a good reason. I'm the only one in our family who eats liver. Oh, okay. Because in most of the. And do you want me to look like that? <laughs> <laughs> you will. Um, no, no, no. The liver. <laughs> You look like he did when he was young. I know. I started with him. Well, I'm staying younger. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, He's taught um, me more. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you know, most carnivores in nature, I believe, uh, go for the organ meats because the, a lot of the nutrition is in the organs rather than the muscle part. Uh, the carn, well, the uh, the scavengers will take the carcass that has a lot of the muscle. Right. Um, so Actually, is I have there an advantage, perhaps, to eating the organ meats uh, compared to the just steak, which is muscle? Well, they knew a lot more. Back in the earlier days, uh, I got hurt Lee. in 48, and they put me on a pound of raw liver right. a day. Yeah. But that was and eight ounces of blood. Yes. Mm. I had to go to the slaughterhouse every afternoon and get a cup of fresh blood, and I had to eat a pound of liver raw. Yeah. And I did that for two or three years. Because I had blood pressure of 41 over nothing. I had a 24 pulse, but uh, it worked. 24 pulse. <laughs> I had three death certificates. I still have three. Two of them are time dated and signed. And the third one is timed and dated. That's a good one. He woke up a second too early. <laughs> Before they bury me. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of things out there that uh, they knew and they prescribed the raw liver for blood problems. Yeah. I went through three windows of my head in an auto accident. And they did not give me any time to live. So I proved them right, mm -hmm. three times. 
but they didn't have the instrumentation that they have now. So by feeling the pulse, listening to the heart of the stethoscope, I was gone. I wasn't. I know now that I flipped into a samadhi type trance to rebuild my body. But uh, they couldn't tell. So I just, I just passed out. Fun and games. Yeah. Yeah, I think the reason why steak is better nowadays is because in the old days, well, of course, we have organ problems now. But that's not the primary problem. The primary problem is most people's muscles have deteriorated. There's no density. The average person comes in is 24 to 40%, maybe 45% fat. There's no muscular density. And so you need the meat for that. And even Gittleman in her book on uh, Why Am I Always So Tired? said you can take all the zinc in the world and you know, it's maybe good for you. Taking capsules, but one piece of meat is 10 times better. The zinc gets where it's gonna go. So we're in a muscle failure disease now in our country. That's what we're in. That's why we have to have the muscle. It's global. And muscle makes up it's more of here. your body than our organ. I'm vegetarian, by the way. Uh, not too bad. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Genetically okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're lucky. All right. But most people can't. But there are some. There's a handful. I've run across two in my life. Like you ran into one. Yeah. Both of mine were Taiwan, I think, somewhere over in that area. Oh, now you don't have to travel so far, Randy. <laughs> Isn't there something to do with blood type? No. Too? no. Blood type diet, it's a great book. Mm. It shows you a lot of weaknesses in the different blood types. But if you fix it, the weakness disappears. And her diet selection will kill most of them, except for what is it? The O is O. Yeah, the O is okay. The rest, the rest of them is work. All right. And that's from, we looked at it. We both did. We looked at what it did, what it, they were saying, had patients with, tried it. Okay, no, I don't like that route. We're going back to mine. <laughs> mine went this way, hers went that way. No, wrong direction. But we tried. And we tried enough to see if it was a fluke or was it routine. But when you're used to miracles, you expect miracles. Now, if you can get better miracles with some of this new stuff out there, that's why we're always looking. We're always adding to. Cool. But if it goes the wrong direction, well, no. I'm kind of greedy that way. So are my patients. They like being well. We still didn't do where we were going. I know. We're going to go now. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, with that. Yeah. You said dehydration was one of the biggest problems in here. The biggest. Fix for that is. That's number one. Yeah. One quart I'll per go 50 with number pounds. One. The one. sugar problem. It's one quart per 50 pounds, a TBM plus one. Okay. Natural healing plus two. Is there is there a simple protocol for the sugar problem thing also? Yeah, yeah. And that's in TBM. In module one. So plus one or two what? Quartz. Pounds? Quartz. Oh, quartz. <laughs> oh, all quartz. How much you weigh? Four liters. Too much. Yeah. Yeah, we know that. Ballpark. Uh, you, you need five quarts to begin with. No, I need more than that. It's that's just the basic. Probably had two, one or two. Yeah. But How much is required? It's 240. 240, that's five. That's about what I was guessing. Too. That's seven liters. And that's a minimum drink up. Yeah. But what we found is that when you drink that extra two quarts of water above your weight, after one to three weeks, you start craving water and you can't live without it. You know you sleep? No. Nah, you sleep. Well, the first one to three weeks, yeah, as you're dumping the what you sipped going to bed. What was the question? What did you say? You crave it even when you sleep. Oh. Yeah, that's because you're up getting rid of the last quart you drank. <laughs> <laughs> and the bigger the glass you use, the easier it is to drink water. If you have a little iced tea glass, one of these right here, big. You can't breathe, you're going to drown. <laughs> so you go, gulp, gulp. <laughs> I bloat when I drink water. <laughs> you drink air. Get it big. 
look into it. Every chug a lug and drink, get your beer. It's that big. Dump two quarts, you know, bam. Get a big glass. You look at it, it says, oh, that's cool. You can breathe, breathe. Dump. Dump it. So get at least a 32 ounce glass and keep it with you. With a big mouth. And empty it. You have to the psychological too. You have to drink less, less big glass to use a small glass. That's right. You know, hey, if you got a patient, there's no way. I drink between eight to twelve liters a day, routinely. Liters. Many liters. liters, and I do. There's no way I can drink thirty of these. I'd be here all day, going, uh huh. <laughs> You know, I'll put my mouth underneath the spigot back there and I can down that one. Yeah. <laughs> but these little things, forget it. When you, when you did me, I had such bad insomnia. I don't even know if I told you I was taking my one to two uh, of those things which is in the Lunesta or sometimes I have to take two of them. I get, sometimes I get up three times. I could not sleep after I had my surgeries at all. So the thing is, is that... Can you, did you treat me for insomnia, or was it just the water? Because it started working. Yes right. and yes. Oh, you did go. Okay, but but uh, yeah, I had that craving for more water after only two weeks. But it I it, I thought it was just totally the water that made me sick. Because you said you Part know if you if you start to if you wake up, go drink more water. And at first, I had to get up in the middle of the night. But the, now I, I can still drink like a, a quart before I go to bed, and I can I get up in the middle of the night and drink another quart, and I still have to go to the bathroom until I get up because I am finally sleeping. <laughs> I'm about to get that sleep and don't want to wake up. And once you get the full quantity in, you start drinking an extra quart on top of that, an extra two quarts. Routinely. Yeah, I do see And you don't even think about it. Right. And that's why... When I, I specialize in environmental intolerant patients. They are hyper, hyper toxic. One little microgram of toxin will throw them into seizures and out cold. These are the patients I deal with routinely. Now, that's where I found and did my research on water because they were so dehydrated that by adding the water in, you started being able to move that toxin around without causing him to react to it. And I found that as I started increasing the water, not only to what Dad was saying, the plus one, but because they were so toxic, I had a handful that, eh, no, you're over the top, you're gonna go plus two. And I saw the increased results. So I started sharing the wealth, like I always do. Well, if it worked great for them, what's it gonna do for this party? Ooh, they did better too. And we started doing it across the board, and our results just skyrocketed. You know, you got a street full of junk. Which is going to heal, clear that street faster? A slow stream or a flash flood? Take that flash flood, and is there anything left on that street? Maybe a little bit of sediment? The motorhomes, the buses, the fire trucks, the cars, the homes, are they there? And you want to do what with the body? <laughs> you got all those solid structures that are not supposed to be there, and a flash flood will wash them away and let the body process it properly. Water's important, that's number one. I won't even see a patient if they haven't drank all of their water, the entire amount, for a minimum of two weeks straight. Or call me when you're ready to be, get well. If you're not going to be, take your health serious, I'm not going to be your band-aid. Because I'm going to be upset I'm not getting the results I expect. And if I'm not getting results I expect, I'm willing to take the blame. And then I'm on the phone to Gil, I'm on the phone to Dad, Germany, London, Australia, uh, Asia, Canada, and everywhere in between. Finding somebody who's got an answer. And I spend a lot of time and money caring about my patients getting well, no matter what. But if it's because they're not doing their job, <coughs> now forget it. They're going to be an active participant. They want to get well. Or you're wasting my time, and you're going to badmouth my rep, which is already bizarre, but I back it. 
and I'm not going to have them question my backing because of their failure. Kind of that way. What does the lemon do to the water? It changes it from water to lemonade. Okay. Does it have an alkali too? Huh? Does it eliminate alkali in your body? Oh, well, if you want to use it for therapy, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Don't count it as water. It's not. That's lemonade or medicine. Uh, I've never bought into the alkaline acid base body chemistry. If you get the system working, it balances out itself. And puts it because some parts have to be alkaline, some parts have to be acid. Or you die. It's real simple. So doing it all in one is real dumb, and everybody I've seen that has been on it for years still has the same problem they came in with. So if it's no end result, what's the point? There is no point. Although cholesterol is a really good money maker, they've already announced over the radio that it has no bearing on health related issues except to sell cholesterol products. Now they've brought out, uh, oh come on, I had to tip my tongue. Lipitor. Lipitor. Oh yeah. And guaranteed liver transplant. <clears throat> and it plugs the liver up that it has to be transplanted with very minimal dose, long-term effects. So they know if they can prescribe Lipitor, we're guaranteed a liver transplant. And they get the patients to go, ask your doctor if you can have. It's not an approved drug, it's not anything else. And when 100,000 people die, they take it off the market. And it was never approved. Lipitor was approved by the same pro token. The public demanded it, so it's got to be a good drug. So we approve it. Okay. Yeah. I heard some stats that once they started invented cholesterol lowering drugs, every time they lowered the standard, when I was in college, it was three anything under three hundred was fine. Yeah. yeah. And every time they've lowered the standard, they make an extra ten billion dollars in drug sales. Yeah. Oh, well, they did the same thing to blood pressure. Now 120 over 80 is sick. It's 110 over 70. Yeah, they weren't selling enough blood pressure pills. Yeah. But it, yeah. I was just looking for a shortcut going back to the red meat issue. I know that they've been powdering adrenals and, and glandulars for a long time. Is anyone looking into a capsule to get yeah. the, the nutrients? If you rupture that cell, so the nutrients have got a half life of seconds. Um, so you have to eat the red meat that much. And it has to be rare. Now that can be a roast. You can thin slice it for roast beef sandwiches. That's fine. There's still enough cells left, but you can't grind it. You can't cook it to medium. So ground beef is useless. It's pointless. Oh, it's great for filling your belly. And if you got a fat burger or in and out, they taste good once in a while. You just don't count it as being a nutritious meal. Hey, you can only live on steak for so long, and you've got to change it to something. Been there, done that. Seven days a week for three months, I think it was. Got lazy and just, I got a pile of steak and cooked it up every night. It was just me. It was several weeks before I could stomach another one. You got to change it up. <laughs> but use the rest of the foods, your salads, your vegetables for a palate change. But the red meat is where you're getting your majority of nutrients and your fresh fruit. We believe it's the vitamin C. Uh, that one, the research is still fuzzy. There's something else there. And vegetables? Not Pointless. Vegetables? Just Tastes good. Side. You'll get more out of the meat than you'll ever get out of the vegetables. Like I said, a one pound steak has more nutritional value as far as the body can use than a bushel of vegetables. That's what we're finding. And I've been talking to several lab techs as well as a biochemist here <coughs> who's also a chiropractor. He keeps me honest and they're agreeing. The, the meat has more nutrients because of the ionic form in which it's in. The body doesn't have to break it down. It'll pass right on through and be immediately used. 
And the more red meat you eat, the more energy you have. It's one of the biggest things is, I'm awake, I'm feeling better, I've got more endurance. I feel stronger. Yeah. How, do, how does fiber fit in that equation? There's a lot of fiber in there. Okay, so no issues there. Especially if you're drinking your water. Yeah. If you don't drink your water, yeah, you can get plugged up. You can get all kinds of problems. What about parasites? <sighs> Not really. Not in today's food. Now, you go to a third world country, Mexico or something, <laughs> or East LA. Or steroids, Maybe. steroids and all the antibiotics and something. Um, look, we live in a toxic world. And take an X and give them that isolated, non-man-made products and have them live on it for what, three months long enough? Yeah, blow it up. And then see how well they enjoy life. And take them out to the stuff that is normal life. Watch them fall flat on their face. If all that health, and go to the local health food store. <laughs> I'm sorry. I agree with some of the research stuff, but when it comes to application, go to any local health food store. Walk in there and look at everybody. Yeah. Count how many people look alive. <laughs> it's smaller. So it's saying, usually one hand. So you're saying we're kind of evolving. Species. We have to. This. Okay. You go to the local grocery store. <laughs> you want to be able to exist in this realm, you're going to have to pretty much. You go to the local grocery store, count how many people look dead. Oh, you may get them obese, <laughs> but they don't look dead. They're functioning. And those that don't are usually on one hand. Now, if all that health food stuff is so bloody healthy, why do they look so dead? <laughs> And the easiest way to rule out health manuals is close the stupid book, turn it to the back, and look at the author. Tell me if you want to look like that. <laughs> now, there's two factors of why he looks like that, possibilities. <coughs> Either he didn't follow his diet, therefore, what's wrong with it? Or he did follow his diet, and look what he did. Neither one's a win, but it's observation. You can dance all the scientific mumbo jumbo you want, and that's great. That gives you something to tell a patient. But since when has science ever got a patient well? Every medical manual out there have you ever seen one of those patients? A textbook case? A lot of you guys have been in practice for a long time. Ever seen a textbook case? So, would you so say where did they write that patient from? from? Eating the meat, drinking the water basically detoxifies you and gives you all the nutrients. It gives you a good head start. Okay. That alone will get you feeling better. It is not the all encompassing, but that is the primaries to get the body functioning and living life. We have to adapt to this environment. It is toxic, it's getting worse. We don't have a choice. If you pulled a man from the 16th century out, a good healthy knight in all his armor, thought him out today, he would die of malnutrition, feeding him 24 seven. The amount of nutrients in his food was so great and there is so little in our food today that he couldn't survive. So, why are we surviving with little nutrients? I think Rutgers did a study several years ago over a 10 year span measuring the nutrient value of foods that had dropped, um, well no, it wasn't Rutgers, it was a government study back in the uh -huh. 40s. Okay. Um, and they measured the nutrient value and over a 10 year span it dropped by a third. Yeah. From 40, by approximately 45 to 55. So if you extrapolate that every 10 years, 30% of 30% of 30% of 30%. In other words, there's nothing left. Essentially. And, and we're still living. Rutgers did do a study um, measuring the nutrient value of organic foods versus 
commercial uh, and one thing though you keep banding around this word organic you know what that means well it was grown on earth right Cert that's all certified organically grown. certified means it was certified on earth <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's special it was grown on earth now there is also, if you start looking at the politics of that organic, Tyson, who sells a lot of chicken, has a lot of money. And America is written on the golden rule. Man with the gold writes the rule. It's the American way. That's elected president, I know. Tyson turned around and rewrote the organic rule that if he quits feeding hormones three days before he kills it, he can say he never gave it to him. And make it again on the label. Okay? That only opened the door for everybody else. That organic certification means nothing. Now, in Europe, I have to back off that rule. Yeah, that doesn't work there. It's getting there. We're really invading it, darn it. But their food still tastes a whole lot better than here. Now, I won't argue about the flavor of organic and have it as a treat. Yeah, absolutely. It tastes great. Better flavor, better for you, I don't care. But it tastes better. But not as a routine. You've got to be able to enjoy the current environment around us and all the chemicals and not get sick off it. The body will process it. It will process a thousand times more than what we've got right now, but you've got to be able to do your water, your meat levels, keep the sugar in, uh, under control, and the body will adapt to the new toxins. It does it every day. Do you have any preference to water, distill? Uh, I prefer not distill, not for any reason that there's a lot of innuendos about distilled water pulling the minerals out. Yeah. And when you're drinking five to ten liters a day, I don't need to uh, stress it and find out if they're right or not. Now, if they are drinking their water, they do have to kick up their salt intake. That is the one thing we have seen. They'll throw their salt balance out, or sodium balance. Uh, we ran into that. One of the, uh, patient at Gill's truck driver out on the road drinking, what was it, two gallons and no salt forever, low salt diet. And we just discovered that, hey, wait a minute, we got to, because I eat salt, I never thought about it, but I've been seeing a bunch of articles, so we're, yeah, I started getting it, but he hadn't come in yet. He ended up in the hospital, got a sodium drip. As soon as the sodium levels came up, he yanked it out and said, forget it, I'm getting back on the road, I'm fine. And they were doing all their mumbo jumbo tests, and he said, no. <laughs> so they got to eat their salt, and it's to taste. Yeah? Any preference between sea salt or mine salt? Taste. It's all comes from the earth, huh? Yeah. I like the taste of the Redmond sea salt. I do too. Especially if I can grind it up, it's yeah. completely different flavor. But other than that, as far as patient-wise, no. I'm not an organic, I'm no purist. Uh, I do eat a lot of meat, uh, I eat fresh fruit, drink a lot of water. But I also enjoy my coffee, I enjoy my pipe. And what I do bad on this side, I overcompensate on this side, so it comes out with a semi-wash. I have to be able to enjoy life. A lot of the other things that are really bad for you, I don't do, so I'm going to enjoy my little things. Now we need the addition. Okay. Uh, we, we actually need, need two, but we need one in the beginning to show what has to be done. Let's see if you can. Uh, Gil, you're going to have to move your camera back a little bit. Camera over to the side there. Well, you're probably going to want to bring it back to the front of 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 the 
Yep. Okay. So his entire rib cage is torqued. And we've got to fix it. So, you want two or? Not Actually, I can do it all in one. No, one at all one. No? No. Fine. We've got to find out what is wrong with him first. Okay. Remember? Yeah. Yep. Well, that's. Because we're not going to fix the computer. That's why we're tag teaming. I know. <laughs> so, oh, we've got a right kidney, left kidney. Come on, hold hard. Yeah. Left kidney. The liver's good. Yes. Gallbladder's not. Five part liver's toast. Five part gallbladder's toast. And <clears throat> heart's good. That's enough. And the lungs are bad. Okay. Now on your back on the table, please. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> Just minor details. Sorry. Okay. So. In here, good. It stayed the same direction. Good. If it happened, so you check them standing. I have seen standing and then standing. I I have seen it change from standing to lying, but it's extremely unusual. So white bear used to defect it. Yeah, it can. I have seen it change. Uh, I check them sitting so that that way it. Uh, just gives me a picture so I don't have to lay him down. But I've also seen it that standing it's this way, lying down they're dead even. So in some rare cases, I've had to fix it standing. So we're going to come in on one, the lower edge on the right, and the upper edge on the left, and I'm going to do a scissor move and straight one up, one down to readjust the ribs. Basic stuff. So take a deep breath, let it out hard, all the way. Okay. Table is still high. Sorry. Oh no. <laughs> and we got it level. So, sit up. Got it. All right, let's see if, come on over here. Okay. Yeah, we got them level. But, hold. Didn't fix kidneys. Didn't fix anything. Now, it's level. Now, let's test and tie in the computer for it. It's weak. And now, look how my thumb's changed. Now that we've got the computer involved, it set up the body according to how it needs to be fixed. The difference between just a hardware adjustment and a software adjustment. By tying in the computer, the body's computer, oh, you're checking that. Okay, yeah, this is the way, which I knew from the palpation, that it has to move this way. So when I tie the computer in, because I already fixed it, it was level. You saw it. Without the computer, it's level. That's the hardware there. The hardware was fine, but the software that controls it was not. So we'll get you back on the table and do it again, this time with the computer. So now, yep. got the rib heads even again. Tie in the computer, and it's good. Right kidney, strong. Left kidney, liver, gallbladder. Five part liver, five part gallbladder. Lungs, one move. What happened? Thank you. Could you, could you check it and then do optimize? 
Sometimes. Not as much demonstration. But what happened? Why doing one little rib torque did all those organs disappear? They were malfunctioning. What's sitting in that rib cage? All the organs. And do you think when those rib heads on the back of the spine are pinching nerves? So by moving that, opens up that nerve. Plus, do you think the ribs are opening and closing appropriately while he's breathing? Or is that compressing all the organs, not only in the lungs, heart, bronchi, also coming in and compressing the abdominal cavity? Because I could have looked for a lot more. I just, dad said quit, and I went, nah, I'll go one more just to, <laughs> I was on a roll. Um, yeah. You no longer do a diaphragm release after the rib. Yeah, I do, but I was demonstrating that. I'll do it for you. No, I won't. Yeah, after your <laughs> Yep. I did. I wasn't going to let you leave without finishing it. I was just using a demo. I'm just trying to get up to, up to speed. All right, come here. <laughs> <laughs> I meant as far as learning. But okay, you can do it. Okay. With rib torque. You got one more, two more aspects. Much cold. That looks good. So he's got anteriors. Because I moved those ribs, he's gonna I'll just do it standing. That's also gonna cause a spasm on the anterior ribs. Crush arms. Yeah, give him a little closer. So I'll just give him a drop. Lean against me. There we go. Great move. Yeah. Just old time stuff. There we go. Now we got the diaphragm. And I like doing the anteriors before I do the diaphragm because then the diaphragm's got all the movement already and it balances out. Got that fixed. And hit T8. Breathe in. Out. And that toast that. Yeah, that's one point. Breathe in. Yeah. Now breathe. A little easier? Hey, that's Smart good. ass. Yeah. Nice yeah. 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 <laughs> Got to improve. Got to change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's that feel? Um, well, yeah, the back's feeling better. And that little spot back there is better, too. And how's your breathing? Um, I think deeper. Good. I like getting results. And if I'm not, then fine. I'll grab my toys over here and play more. Even if I am on stage. That's kind of standard. Yeah. No problem. We'll just wait but, until the break. Play. This is one way of showing that the body is not only a hardware computer problem, but you have software. So you got to do both. If all you do is pop and pray, you're not praying hard enough because you're not getting the result. So you got to pop and then pray with the computer. You turn it on. When the structure's right and the computer programs are right, you've got a healthy patient. And I like healthy patients. I'm spoiled. And we don't like fixing the same thing over and over and over. You know, it's... Like one of the analogies I use is you're driving down the road and your tire goes flat. If you never look at your flat tire, how many things can you diagnose going down the road? Welcome to the medical model. You got shocks, alignment. Uh, yep. Balance. You know, you got all kinds of stuff. And if that vibration keeps going, it's going to foam up your tank. So now you got engine trouble, not counting the dentistry that's going to be from your teeth being cracked from chattering, <clears throat> when all you needed to do was look at the tire, oh, it's flat, and chiropractic does part of that, but all they do is put air in the tire with the vitamin. Well, that's great, but you're still losing air, so you got to keep doing it forever. 
Why don't you look for the stupid nail or screw in the tire, pop it out, patch it, now give it a short burst of air, a one-shot deal, fill the tire up, and drive down the road. I'm kind of lazy that way. Less work, patient's happy. Yeah, I see patients for a, very frequently for a short period of time, and usually in about six weeks, they're on their own. I don't want to see them. I'm bored. Oh, they'll come by for a cup of coffee or something, or we'll go to dinner or whatever, as friends, until they screw up. But I'm not seeing a patient forever. I know how they work. By the end of six weeks, they're in pretty good shape, if not well. If they're not, then we'll postpone it a little longer. I expect them to get well. And I get four or five, 20 of their friends coming in because I didn't see them forever. I saw them quick, short. I'll see them three times a week for two weeks, twice a week for two weeks, once a week for two weeks, and that's it. By the time I know where they're sitting, if they've got longer problems because the body's taking more time to heal, I know how long to see them, but they're not gonna be there forever. I don't like them, not as a patient. I believe six weeks is more than enough. Even the stuff I see, which is MS, wheelchairs, six weeks, they're moving. Yeah, it's gonna take a little longer to get some of that coordination to walking without a cane or support, but they're already down the road, they've got control, their muscle strength's building up, part on their work. But fun and games, and I get the referrals. And referrals are a lot more fun when, oh, they said they can't go, oh, go talk to this guy. If it can't be done, he's the one to call. That's a nice reputation. I like it, and it's global. Actually, Daddy started that rep, and I just <coughs> managed to ride his shirt tail, and now they're calling me. <laughs> it was a good tail to ride. Thanks. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with being Daddy's shadow for many years. It put me in a good position to take over or advance. And it's not take over his business, meaning just take over everything he's done, <coughs> carry it to the next level, <coughs> and keep it fun. Yeah. Being fun don't do it. Life's too short. Any question about root work? This is one of the most common injuries that patients get, root work. How many treat repeatable hiatal hernias? Over and over and over. Every time they come in, they got it again. You haven't treated the right thing. Because what they have is a pseudo hiatal hernia. They've got a rib torque, which put a fold in the diaphragm. Now the tissue gets caught in the fold. And they got high hernia. You treat it like you would normally, rip that sucker down, and do it my way, then it should fix completely. But you didn't fix the fold. So a few hours, week, comes right back, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it keeps reoccurring, it's a pseudo, it's not a real. You treat a real hiatal hernia, one correction should be sufficient if you do all the right parts. And once you've ripped it down, you gotta rub the rib heads bilaterally on the sternum, rub hard, bruise the patient. Huh? Yes, yes they, they do, yes they do. No, it hurts. <laughs> Do the their first meal, diaphragm they love it. And T8. And send them out to eat. What food have you missed the most? Oh, I haven't had in 20 years. Yeah. Know your town. 
and not by reputation. <laughs> know your town by being there. The best chili, the best tacos, the best over here, over here, over here. And if they don't have it, don't recommend it. And if you haven't been there, don't recommend it. Go to a restaurant that you have attended and make them go eat now. And if they don't go then, well, I'll do it tonight. Ah, I'm a little busy tonight. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow, and in four or five days, they got the hydro hernia back. They didn't challenge the food, therefore the body forgot it got fixed. You've allowed your body to go back into the old rut. Got to go out and challenge. Had a, I had a doctor send his father in many years ago, and he had been all over the world. He had not kept a meal down for 25 years. He'd been to Europe, all over America, no help. So he flew out from Connecticut. And came to the Surly Hills, came to the Rock and Tonga. I x-rayed, examined, treated. And OK, what food have you missed the most? I haven't had chili in 25 years. You're in luck. The best chili in LA is two blocks to the right. Tell Sally I sent you. And he did. He took his limo driver. They went down and had chili. Now he not only had a bowl of chili, he had four bowls of chili. He'd been there. He knew he was going to prove me wrong. He'd never got fixed anywhere else. Then he went back to the hotel in Beverly Hills. And directly across the street from the Century Plaza is El Torito, Mexican food. He went across that night and digged out on Mexican food and hot sauce. Came back the next morning, checked him out, he was fine, no problem. Said, okay, you can go home. But here's the name and number of a doctor in your area. If you have trouble, call him. Tell him to call me. He does not know all the technique. He knows the AK technique, it's not enough. Well, that's been, what, 30 years? He has never blown out his idol hernia again. And this guy owned seven Greek restaurants in New England. He could have dropped a million bucks right there. You know, what's the health worth? Put it there, I'll give it back if I fail. I made 160 bucks. 25 years of sheer hell. Gone. So easy. Fun and games. And we do it routinely. Makes it fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Oh, that's no good. There we go. Oh, good. How would you take care of a child with autism? <laughs> uh, close. I'm not sure. Six uh, weeks, right? I saw Frederick uh, just last week. What did he? <laughs> He's nine. Yeah. 99% normal. The only thing that stopped, even the autistic look, was he wasn't eating any meat. Oh. No, and I saw them last time I wasn't on the meat kick as much. He is now. Okay. And he's jumping. Good. Yeah, natural healing does very well with autism. Yeah. And we're able to reverse it. This kid was in a uh, wheelchair, <clears throat> couldn't do anything. I'm teaching, ignore. <laughs> uh, he couldn't do anything. Wouldn't move around, couldn't talk. He was four. Worked on him, busted my tail for a week, trying to figure out all the parameters, because he was at research. Uh, saw him again and got some... Okay, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, since you couldn't get me, he called you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Kevin. Yo. Yeah. 
Can you call back in about uh, 25 minutes? Where, where in park are you teaching your class? Both of us, okay? Kevin? <laughs> Never off call. Uh, he started moving around. By the end of the five days, he was running around. I saw him, what, three months later in Bruges? Yeah. Something like that. He acted almost like a normal kid. Uh, a little slow in his speech, some of his de developmental, because he missed the first four years. Hadn't seen him since till my, over Christmas when I was in Germany. And he was like a normal kid. He still had a little bit of the autistic uh, facial expression. And I was wondering what was going on, found out about the meat. Worked on some more. He's talking normal and he's catching up. Can we do something about it? Yeah. Can now. So I've got a few other doctors that are playing with him as well. But I guess their thing is so routine they forget to brag about it. I haven't had that good of luck. I've had success some, but you got to take out that vaccination. Oh yeah. I fully agree that they are caused by teen baby shots. Bad news. I had one autistic child that I treated for 23 years, every week. And I got to give her a hug when I sold the office. The first time, I could not get close to her. These kids are molested. That needle violated their being. They are a rape victim. When she'd come in, I stripped down to the waist. No coat, white shirt and tie, in another room. Or I couldn't even get in the room with her. But you realize that they have been molested. And in the beginning, when I was learning them, I thought it was a physical. Until I had a chiropractor that I knew. I knew the whole family, I knew the whole McGillop, McGill, and their child had, was autistic. And I knew they hadn't been molested. And I was very dogmatic about it in the beginning. Um, I finally really looked at it. It's the needle. The white coat, the needle, that's the molestation. And of course the drug. But the needle is a big thing. So you gotta be able to take that out of the body. And of course TBM does a good job on that sort of natural healing, getting that got by the body. Then going after the emotions. But of course I didn't know TBM then either. <coughs> yeah. So natural healing has several avenues going after much deeper problems. So. Yeah. I'm just, I send it him. I chicken out. But they're fun. Yeah, the treatment, actual treatment took what? 30 seconds, a minute? It was better. Yeah. It was less than five minutes, that's for sure. Just kept running around. Yeah, it was catching him. Laughing, giggling, the sister. So it doesn't take long. That's what I like about my work, is it's quick, short doctor time. Mega results patient time. Well, it's patient field. Fix their body. It's their body. It's their job. <coughs> it's not my job to go after every cell. Their body knows what's wrong. Fix it. Come in with a nice big club called Vial. One of them. That one. I've got 59 others that do different jobs. And <coughs> get the body to fix it. Let it run its autocorrect programs the way it wants to run it not the way some man said it needs to be run. 
Because who knows more about how the body works? Their individual body? Or us with all of our educated knowledge and scientific mumbo jumbo? Uh, you said that things start at a simple cause and, and get to more complicated, right? Like we all think that. Do you think that TV or all the stuff that you're working on is moving towards a one fix for all thing? I know you said that, but. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> First aid, I've treated everything from air sickness, fear of flying, flus, colds, uh, hip replacement. So it is being. With that one vial. Quantum healing, then, I guess, is what we're dealing with. Not that small. Okay. <laughs> it goes much bigger than quantum physics. And it goes way beyond even chaos theory. With natural healing, yeah. Quantum physics, that's in TBM step. Long before it was a term of quantum physics. And we've taken it well beyond that. There's a lot of research that goes in putting it together. Yeah, I sit up here and I wave my hands and it makes all kinds of uh, changes of this, changes of that. You don't understand how much work really went into it. Ah, uh, it's just some little thing with a label on it. Ah, I can't do all that. And, oh, well, it did something. There are thousands and thousands of hours of research going into writing these protocols. It's not an arbitrary just put a label on. It's a lot of work. You know the 100 monkey theory and all that good stuff, right? Do you perceive that as you guys get more known and understood that this is just kind of transferred to stuff? to other fields, I mean, this understanding that you guys have come up with? Yeah, it's already transferred. Functional physiology, the principles that we showed you with the uh, rib torque, majority of the other techniques out there being taught have that as a foundation that Dad started, including my work. He started the functional physiology, stepped out of the straight physical aspect and looked at how the body functions. And now we've got, what, hundreds, thousands of techniques that all use that basic principle. Oh, they got different points, and, but their basic concept <coughs> of treatment is still using it and going after it from those angles. That just happened to be the man that started it. that answer? Any other questions? Yeah? You talked about rib, uh, rib, uh, rib torque? Being, uh, and rib tears. Uh, I, have, uh, I had to carry a three-year-old uh, about uh, some bit almost a week ago, like this, for quite a while. And now I've got something between my, my middle back and my neck that I just cannot get. Uh, I, I've chiropractors have tried to adjust it and say it's fine, but it, it just hurts all the time. It hurts to put my head down. Could it be something else? Yeah, highly possible. Could be the structure is not out at all, but the nerves are. It uh, could be once you get the nerves back in place, then it'll realign the bones that need to be adjusted. How do you fix that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Get up here. Let's see what it comes up with. I'm not making any promises, but it gives a good theory. Maybe we'll get lucky. Okay. Now, does it hurt now? Well, if I put my head down, yeah, good. it hurts. Feel it. Put it so it hurts. Notice how far he's moving. Okay, notice the quality of the pain. Before you run that, yeah. check and see what kind of problems are, are showing. Oh, just like right. we did. He did. He got that pain. That's just one. Uh, <laughs> some smart people.
<laughs> common integument. <laughs> common integument. That's the opening for Mount Venus. That's just a basic version. I'm not doing the upteen trillion combo. No, just, you got a while for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do. That's And get enough rib out. Inside. Okay. Is that enough? Yep. Good. Now let's go to my room. Cheat. Row natural healing on, goes weak. Breathe in. Out. Hold. That takes care of that. Now I have common integument. Fix all that. <coughs> Changed all the structure up there. Yeah, let's see. Move your head. See how the pain is. Uh, I can go farther down. It's it's better. So it's nerves and uh, and ribs. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, okay. That's what I like. Yeah. You know, the one thing that a lot of techniques like to overlook, they think there is only one. It's either structure or nerve. One minor problem, are you just a right hand or just a left hand? Which I got reversed. <laughs> you can't do anything with just one hand. They've got to be together. They got to work as one. Well, thank you. I have to, I have to drive cranes. Uh... It'll help a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Want to get back? <laughs> yeah. It's my birthday. Congratulations. <laughs> Happy birthday. That's all. <laughs> 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 do, you, do, you, do you need another example? What you got? I think I have that rib torque. Okay, let's see. Why would you want to show people that come into your office problems that they have before you work on them? Having a clue. I, they came in with a problem. I fixed it. I but then you didn't work on their liver or their, or their kidney no. or their knee. Yeah, or. I was telling you my liver's bad too, everybody. <laughs> Doctor cheated yesterday. Doctor who? Doctor cheated. Testing good, though, isn't it? Well, huh. not testing anything at all. Not in high thymus. Macho. No. The only one I've ever had macho me, Jenna. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or mom. <laughs> yeah, three. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 Anything, but Run optimized. I know, I know. You just want this little toy, that's all. And the minor detail of 100% recall, 100% comprehension. <laughs> Breathe in. Out. Oh. Just a minor trick. So you put the vial over whatever area you want to check? No, I just put it in the center of the chest. On In this case. But yes, I will clear up your localized if I got a serious problem. Breathe in. Okay, move around. See how that feels. I didn't say leave. Oh, I said sorry. walk around. See <laughs> okay. how that feels. <laughs> Gates changing. It's better. What's changed? I had it, I had it here for months. I'm a chiropractic uh, assistant. I just didn't want to go to how to schedule new patients. <laughs> Still changing? Yes. Good. Down the arm. Got it. Feeling? Hot oh. feeling? Hey, say it louder. I have a hot feeling down the arm. Now, did you see me ask what all was going on? Oh, I checked a few points. Nothing showed. 
I had no idea about this, except I knew something was going on. And your toast. Oh, thank you. Really? Yeah. Syndrome? Uh, personally, no. Okay. Honestly, I mean, I'd rather tell you up front. Oh, I appreciate that. You know. That, uh, can I do something for it? Yeah. I have no doubt about that at all. I just haven't had the opportunity yet. That's I just mean. haven't found a victim walk into my office or a seminar. No, remember Kitty? Huh? Remember Kitty? Yeah. We changed her 57 points on intelligence. Wow. And that was back in the beginning, early 80s. Of when? 80s? Early 70s. 70s. Yeah, well, she was still coming in at 80s. Oh, that's right. She came up until 85. Yeah. And wasn't supposed to live that long either. But she was still there. But with what <coughs> I've learned about autistic, yeah, there's quite a bit I can do about but Down syndrome. A, yeah, Down Okay, they got the normal meeting and network A, Bronson, the hall, and in 10 minutes. Just like yesterday. So, okay. if we need you guys for your patients, how do we contact you? Call. Just call and request the fees and all that stuff. You got to travel, obviously. Well, you have to travel to you. Or... Yeah, you got to call and request the fees. That number, you can get a hold of one of us. So I'm looking going back and forth with Germany here next month. We we'll start doing it every month or so, switch back and forth. So, but I'm available email, uh, and you can get a hold of TBM. They can always get a hold of me. If we've got a problem, yeah. I have a problem that my knife has been in it all the time. So I actually have to have salt to kind of neutralize it. Can you tell me what is going on? Sweet taste in your mouth? Mm -hmm. And you want to get rid of it? Yes. Oh, audacity. Yeah, I'd love to have a sweet taste in my mouth all the time. No adage, right? <laughs> well, I guess it's the old adage, too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing. Sweet exactly. taste of success. Yeah. Uh, Got to be a bacteria uh, mechanism of some type. It's on top of my head. <laughs> you ever heard of it? Uh, so I still go call and take it. I cannot yeah. digest sugar, anything that has a sugar, because I already, it seems like I have too much sugar in my body. Oh, duh, duh, yes. How about liver fermentation, Dad? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. I, we ran into that a couple bit ago. Now, what do we do to fix it? Do you a oil? Oh, great. <laughs> okay, good. Come here. <laughs> so it's a natural healing. Oh, yeah. It's got all my toys in it. Plus all of Daddy's toys. Plus a few other toys. That aren't on the list. Do you have a taste right now? Mm, I get almost every day. Almost so, isn't right now. So you have right now? Um, right now, actually, I had the pomegranate juice to take care of it. So. I love it. <laughs> Give us a problem and then doesn't have it to prove it's fixed or not fixed. No, but I can tell you by a couple hours, though. So. Which hours? I like seconds. You know, like right now is late. We'll jar them up. Hold hard. Nope. I don't know who worked on her, but I can't do diddly on you right now. Now catch me around and we'll see if we can do something. Okay. You're toast. Okay. So whatever you're doing is build you up. And there's no room. If I do something, it can make you real sick. Especially if I've done it. Okay. So when would be the good time when I actually uh, have to Catch me after lunch. Okay. I'll be down in the uh, market area somewhere. Okay. Okay. You see me, catch me, and we'll All right, thanks. see if we can do something. Did you just, I'm sorry, what did you say? Hi, Thymus. Hi, Thymus.
to make sure she's not toast. Filled. Her body's computer is completely filled up. And if I go one button over that, I can crash and cause serious problems or minimal problems. And you never know how far it crashes until after it happened. So I can add a virus to it then? Huh? Can I get an antivirus? <laughs> no. You ever wrote a long uh, report? You hit print. You spent days putting it together. And then you go to hit save while it's still spooling to the printer. And your computer locks up and loses your document. Yeah, I don't like those modes on people. I never know what document it just froze so, up on. What's the test for that? Hi, Thymus. Take your thumb, put it over the middle two fingers. Mm -hmm. Leave the index and pinky out, index middle of the throat, pinky all the way down the chest. Test an arm. If it goes weak, you're through. You're finished. They can't handle any more. With natural healing, we added an extra feature to it, but still the same principle. You're finished. So if you test that first thing on somebody... You don't touch them. You cannot even ask a question. You will not get an accurate answer. So you tell them a couple quarts of water, steak at lunch, and then come find you. <clears throat> Sounds good. See you in an hour or so. Get a few minutes to wind down. See if they come out of it. Yeah. Give them some time. Even new patients. I check high thymus before I'm going to touch them. Or I'm not going to get the results. I'm not going to get the accuracy. Any other questions? Yeah. What kind of water do you recommend? Are you making it drinking tap water? Not in Vegas. They got fluoride in it. I tried when I first moved here, and I was just going down the tubes. I even I couldn't fix the amount of volume of fluoride I was drinking. Normally, I can fix it and drink it, and I prefer tap. It's better balance than most of the filtered. But fluoride was more than even my body could handle. So I've got E-Water's uh, under sink RO unit, and it works real well. I'm happy with it. Distilled, no, I think it leaches out the minerals, or at least at the volumes that we're drinking, I'm not willing to risk it. So, but reverse is fine, spring water, yeah. On, on telling someone that doesn't drink water that's in dehydration, uh, you can't just turn them on to it, can you? I mean, you tell them that the body won't utilize it right away if it's not utilizing it right. If they don't start the first day drinking the full amount, I don't see them the second day. Do they run a chance of, uh, at that point, with the body telling it we're in dehydration of edema or swelling? Or? Yeah, they're going to swell some. They're going to run to the bathroom every 10 minutes. I warn them. That's dehydration. When that quits, now you know you're not as dehydrated. How long does that take? Normally? One to three weeks. Unless they skip a day. I almost, yeah, well, you're one to three weeks, start over, and now it's two to six weeks. So don't hesitate to tell them to start it right away, full blown. Full blown. Now, if they're on dialysis and no urine production, okay, that would be stupid. <laughs> Uh, they are going to increase. I'm going to double whatever the medical model said. And when I start getting urine production, then we're going to rapidly increase it and get them up to full speed. Uh, but no, having them explode because of taking water, no, 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 no. they got to be able to get it out. And that gal who died from the radio show of the water contest, I'm sorry, basic physics say that if she drank all that water and the bladder had to go, it is going to go long before she is going to die from it. She had other health problems, and they're trying to find an escape goat that's ruining their business by water. Yeah? What about diabetes? What about it? How do you, can you treat that? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's a basic six-week protocol. In fact, that's where I got my protocol for treating patients because it made the most sense. Uh, it's real simple. It's easy. 
Straight out of TBMs. Well, it's your technique. Which? Sugar. Oh, yeah. It's the only technique out there. It's the only one that works. And I've gotten them off. I had one patient. He had six tablets left of his insulin, and he wanted to get off it. So I ran it first day. Six months later, he still had six tablets and never ordered any more. Can you check? Yeah, it takes a lot of follow through yeah. okay. to fix it. We'll find some. Where are you located? Uh, Arizona or Minnesota. What part? Prescott, uh, Arizona. Prescott. Uh, no, it's not too far down from Phoenix, but. No, it's up from We've Phoenix. got uh, yeah. Hana Stein in Phoenix. Uh, we got. Uh, we got Kip Altman, uh, another in Tucson. Yeah, no, we've got uh, Sedona. That's closest. Okay, Sedona, we've got D. No D way. Morris. Oh, okay. And she does yours and mine. Yeah, okay. So, D Morris. Uh, I can look up her number in a minute. Let's see what I can do. Oh. And nothing at the moment. But get your water in. Oh, man. Huh? She's full. Well, learning and emotions can also fill the computer. And those of you that are in class with me yesterday afternoon, I was saying with high thymus that just the drive coming into the office can toast them. Give them 15, 20 minutes to relax. Give them some water. Calm down. And then you can see if you can treat them. Anxiety. Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. That can toast you up. You know, the sugar technique, it's easy to fix, but it needs some monitoring. Uh, and that's something I'd rather do as a uh, long-term treatment, not on stage, get the system started, because there's more involved. Uh, there's a diet that you have to follow. There's parts that need to be. So whoever's going to be doing your treating, and D. Morris would probably be the closest. That. Uh, She's right there in Sedona. That's about Oh, that's nothing for Arizona. Long number cuts her off on the way over there. Huh? Long, long, long number cuts her off driving over there. Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Frank. We're supposed to go Which to one? Yeah. Did you tell him <laughs> my favorite fix that you do for mosquitoes? No. No. That's a good one. You like that? <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Go ahead, tell them. <laughs> Stroke down your nose exactly 29 times. Not 28, not 30, 29. It's got to be 30. 30. 30. That's why oh, you're still learning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was last year, it was 29, so. Well, 30. 30. 30 for last year. 30 years. Yeah. 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 Stroke down? Stroke yeah. down. One finger. Down yeah. yeah. 30 yeah. times. I count 30 times. And he is the mosquitoes in the Everglades. Well, my body. Say lovely. Unless you go to Papier-Té or Quebec. They do not speak French. <laughs> okay, thank you all for coming. <laughs>